I sent you a couple of emails with some photos in them just now. of animals, fans of tigers, <laughs> big tigers, small tigers, wild animals in general, but we like to focus on cats because this is Cat Chat, and I have the queen of the cats with me today and every Wednesday at 12 noon. Please put your hands together and give a warm welcome for one of my favorite people, Carol Baskin. She's right up there. Hi, Carol Baskin. What happened to her mic again? Oh. Uh, I'm being, go hit her, go hit her, slap her. See the side of her head? If you can, uh, it's your choice, left side, right side. Hi, Carol Baskin. Hello, how are you, David? Good, although she's not ringy dingy today. We got rid of our echo. <laughs> and That's we got rid great. of the light, I look terrible. I, I, I look better blown out with lighting. <laughs> so what's new, Carol Baskin? Gosh, there's always so much new stuff going on. I know. Um, are you able, did you get the photos that I sent over to you just now? I sent two emails with photos and attachments in each. And then I had sent you a link to a video. I didn't know if you could play a video from YouTube. Yeah, what we do, how, how we do that is you can go ahead and send us the link like you did. And uh, we download it and convert it. Actually, that is a preferred method of getting the video. Because you said that it's more convenient. So you, or if anybody ever wants to send us a video, just send us a YouTube link. We'll handle the rest. Like we, so we prefer it that way. Even, even, um, even videos for wild animal television, you know, that you want to submit. Um, Great. Now, we did get a video for you. I believe we had that today. Is that correct? Yep. Nancy Gold. Yes, we have. Okay, now the pictures, I don't, I believe we started, like, how long ago did you send the pictures? Because I didn't see me in there when we just... Just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, so I don't think we'll be able to, if we do get there, <coughs> if you, uh, well, it's up to you, because you know, you are the star of the show. So, if, if we want those pictures in the show, I have to physically get up and walk over there, because I have to do something special to get them. <laughs> so, do you want me to do that? Are they, are they good pictures? Uh, there's some really pretty pictures in there of the kittens and some of well, the new cats. Why don't we do this? So it's probably worthwhile to do that. Maybe you could do it while you're playing the uh, video. Well, how long is the video? Two minutes and 46 seconds. Okay, we could do that, that or, because I like to save that video for around the middle of the show to keep you watching. Okay. But is there anything maybe you want to tell us and then we can go to you full screen and I can run over there. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I can... Okay, so one I, I would because what I was going to talk about next is uh, well the video that you have is from is it from Hamburger Hamburger Mary's? Yes, okay. it's about our event that's coming up on July the first at Hamburger Mary's. Okay, and so, so what we'll do is we'll go to you full screen and you could tell us about that. Maybe tell us how you even got how you know how why did they even come? You know, give us a little history on how you even got involved with Hamburger Mary's. Okay, and then we'll go to video. Well, I'm pretty sure that that was your fault, David. <laughs> I'm thinking when you were here, you took us to Hamburger Mary's oh, for the first time. Oh, well, that's time. good. Okay, can you go to her? And did uh, you meet Melanie when you were here? Melanie. Um, yes. The, the name sounds familiar. Does she, work at, at, does she work at your place? No, she's the host for Drag Queen Bingo, and she was oh. just such a hoot. She's in the uh, video that you're going to play later on. But uh, we had a wonderful time last night. We went down while they were doing a benefit for Autism Speaks. And <laughs> it was funny because Howie thought they were saying Autism Stinks, which it does. But um, it's actually called Autism Speaks. <laughs> and they raised, I'm thinking, like over $1,500 for them. And so we're figuring we can probably fill the house and raise 2000 2500 It's going to be July 1st at Hamburger Mary's at... 7.30 p.m. I think the video says 7 p.m. But we went down and we had dinner before the bingo began. And they have really excellent food there. 
as you remember from when you were there. And it's just such a fun type of environment. Uh, a lot of drag queens, a lot of very interesting people in the audience, and a, a great place to just kind of let it all hang out. So we're hoping some of the people who have been upset that we haven't had a furball for the last several years will take this as an opportunity to come back and dress up in all of their fur, fur ball regalia with the ears and the tails and the painted faces. And we're going to have uh, costumes for that, or costume contests rather for that. And 10 prizes. There's 10 bingo games and then 10 prizes for each of, or a prize for each of the bingo yeah, games. <laughs> and I'm really hoping I'm going to be able to hold out. This is the first cold I've had in 16 years. Oh, and I, I'm being such a baby about it. I can't breathe. I can't talk. Uh, yeah, you sound a little down today. I can tell by your emails when you're down. I can tell everything. I'm like psychic or something. <laughs> I was able to tell when Nancy's down. You all probably tell when I'm down. I'm down all the time. No. <laughs> We're going to call you Dr. Dave. <laughs> but like, I'm always, you know, it's so funny. I don't have no time to be down. Well, if I'm down, if I'm down, like if I get depressed and all that kind of stuff, it really interferes with my flow of business. It's yes. just, it just takes so, it's so hard to be down. But sometimes you can't help to be down, especially when you have a cold. I can't focus on anything. I just feel stupid. Well, really horrible feeling. And, so, and, and then you sit there and wonder, well, how in the world am I getting a cold? I'm in paradise. Colds don't happen <laughs> down here. And with me, I never get sick. I take these really great vitamins. They're made by um, Oligo. And they're expensive. They're for women over 50. I turn 52 tomorrow. And so they help me with the hot flashes and all of that sort of thing. But, man, I, I can't believe I went like three days without vitamins and boom, this cold just took me right off my feet. Speaking of beauty, Carol Baskin, now you're supposed to be losing a week a pound. A week a pound. A pound a week. Yes, I'm down a pound. Now, how do we know that you're telling, like, we need documentation or something? How are you documenting this? Uh, maybe I'll bring a set of scales in or something and take the webcam. Yeah, I'm sorry, but we would like a screenshot of your scale. <laughs> That's a great idea. No, we'll believe you on this one because, well, why the hell are you going to lie about it? <laughs> in 20, 20, 20 weeks, you'll probably start to see a difference. <laughs> We'll be like, she's getting awfully thin, yeah. We're like, you can stop now. Like, she'll get all anorexic and like, like her. don't let it turn into an eating problem in the name of the show. You know, that's <laughs> what happened the last time. I lost so much weight. All my family was like, you're too skinny. You're going to die. And it was like, I really felt good being much thinner. But uh, had an awful lot of people worried about me. And it, I don't do fad diets or anything stupid. I just, you know, am really healthy about my choices. And uh, I think it's something I can sustain if I find a better way to deal with stress well i don't know if you saw on facebook or anything but my dog had puppies yesterday i saw that what happened because you were the guy that's always saying spay and neuter your pets i know right well here's what happened i have a dog that we've had we've had her for a little bit over a year and she was a rescue from the street and we took her to the vet and we um we didn't have her fixed but, you know, but she, she already had normal vet care and all that kind of stuff. But, but we didn't think that we had to have her fixed right away because to have her fixed was $279. So it's just, you know, and then it's like the logistics involved. And it, and the, but my partner was supposed to have her fixed while I was in Oklahoma. So when I came back, she still wasn't. Okay, mm -hmm. but it was really like, well, it's not going to be a problem. We don't have any dog that can get her pregnant. Okay, we have, so we have this dog. It named, was a miracle. We have a dog named Chin who has had, we got him from the animal place here called the um, East Liberty uh, Animal Rescue League. Oh, you can't, did you uncompress him? Oh, what's the file extension? It says JPEG, but it's not loading up correctly. Oh, I think you might be reading them within the zip compressed file. You're not? Okay, well, I'll, I'll just... The only one that came through is this one. Oh. She said only one of the photos came through. Like, oh, that's like, too bad. Like, we got the file and unzipped it and all that. I think one file had, like, three pictures, and the other one had probably eight. Is that what it... Um, I got the same files twice. So let me tell you what, let me... 
She's going to work on it. So anyways, well, okay, so I have this one dog that's named Chin, who we got. He's the deformed one. He has deformed legs and stuff like that, so he couldn't even, I don't even know how he could get on her. But he had his testicles removed because he, what do they call that for dogs? Male dog, is it neutered? Neutered. Okay, so he was neutered. Um, although he still would get an erection, but whatever, I guess they could still do that. Um, and he would try to hump her every now and then. And I just, but I've seen dogs that were neutered that still have that behavior. Didn't really think yeah. anything of it. Well, um, and I didn't really know she was pregnant because uh, we feed our dogs very well. <laughs> so then, you know, they're, she's always just kind of been, you know, when we first got her, we fattened her up. And she's always just kind of, we thought that she was just getting a little bit fatter, but nothing really big. But I did notice that her breast got like very big. <laughs> And I still, and I just thought, you know what, uh, maybe she's just going through like a heat cycle or something like that. Because even when she would be in heat, you kind of even didn't know, you know. So I just thought, whatever. And then, and then milk came out of her breast one day. And I was like, well, maybe she's just having false, I don't know. I was just hoping, like false, I don't know, false milk making. <laughs> so then, uh, I, I just still, and then I just, then I kind of figured it out. About a week ago. Was that when the puppy started arriving? <laughs> no. Yeah, really. Well, no, I just kind of figured out she's got to be pregnant, you know, because she started getting that pregnant look. And then just yesterday, uh, she came into the, because uh, her and I, you know, she's, she's it's like, because I baby her and stuff like that, so she's very close to me. So she came to me, and, uh, and she hopped up on the bed, and then she just kind of, and then she like threw up. Just like spit threw up or whatever, you know, because I'm mm. sure that makes you nauseated. So, and then <coughs> she did a turn, and then a puppy came out. I was like, okay. And then, uh, you know, I, like, assisted her. And, uh, and then my partner, you know, I had him go get some uh, towels and, uh, you know, the whole warm towel thing. And uh, so he got all that. And then, you know, so she started having them. And then I, so that took, like, about two hours. So I, like, assisted her with that. You know, some of them I had to help pull out. And, um... You know, have you ever had, you know how, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to get, it's kind of gross. <laughs> but yet, you know, it's life, right? So then we get, we, she, we get up to five. And I'm like, I, I felt her stomach and stuff. I'm like, well, that's it for sure. And then she said, then she like chilled out for a while, laid back, you know, all the puppies were all nursing and everything like that. You know, I made sure everybody was cool, copacetic. <laughs> and so then I decided to come to, uh, to work. And, uh. Well, it's not work. Come to my dream. So I came here, <laughs> and uh, <coughs> my husband calls me and said, guess what? I'm like, what? He's like, she had three more. Three more? Oh, my goodness. I know. And how, I think, how dumb, seriously, how dumb are you, David Stanton, that your dog could be pregnant with eight puppies, and you don't even realize to a week ahead, eight? Wow. You would think she would be as big as a house, right? But she, she just wasn't. She's like one of those dogs that she's like real loose skin and all that. And you just, I don't know. I so, hope you have eight very good friends who all want to have puppies. <laughs> well, we've got two of them so far. Well, I'll tell you one thing. They're not going to, if they go to a shelter or something, you know what I mean? They're definitely not going to go to a kill shelter. It's going to be a no-kill shelter. And, and we're certainly going to try to adopt, you know, as many as we can out. You know, but eight's a lot of freaking dogs. Man, I don't know. You already had a bunch of dogs too, didn't you? Six. Wow, <laughs> you more than doubled your population. Well, no, we got we're down one. We're down one, and we have some cats. We have three cats, so we're down a cat because one of the cats got out, and because our a storm blew up in a door, and our cat Sugar, who have who has epilepsy, she got out and she hasn't been back yet. Oh, poor thing. What well, it, <coughs> it worries me. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, because one, I love my animals very much, but also because she has epilepsy and we have to give her phenobarbital every day. Mm. And when she has, like, if you don't give her that, she has those attacks, right? So if, if uh, she has attacks like that, the other animals, another animal tries to attack another animal when they're having seizures. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Why is that, Nancy? Not, not you. I, I, I meant Nance. I, uh, you're on my mind. I meant uh, uh, Carol. 
So there can be a couple of reasons for it. The African savanna, a lot of times if a lion or a lioness is dying, the other lions in the pride will kill them rather than let them die a long, anguishing death. So it's more of a mercy killing for them to do right. that. Oh. So it may be that with the animal that's showing such signs of, um, of, a, of right. illness. But it also may be because it just scares them. They don't know what's going on with the animal. Because I see attack. that across the board with all animals. Dogs. Especially, like, watch a dog. If you, like, matter of fact, I've seen, like, in videos where people are, you know, unfortunately, they go start beating their dog or something like that. The other dogs will start attacking the other dog. Or will wow. start attacking the dog that's being beat. Mm. You know, so like it just, I mean, I've seen, I mean, it's weird how I see this kind of stuff in animals that they, they just will attack a weaker one or one that's acting really strange. There's so much going on in their heads and with their senses that we just can't even begin to understand. Right. You know, I was curious, like, how does something like in your facility, now, because you put tigers together <coughs> every, every, oh, poor Kira, I just want to send her a cough drop. Oh, I have a golf drop. Or NyQuil or something. <laughs> Dayquil. The fisherman's friend. Yeah. What is that? What, can you go to her so I can see that? Fisherman's friend. Now, fish, <laughs> what is that? Is that a cough drop? It's a cough drop. I was wondering this morning why they call it fisherman's friend. It's the most god-awful tasting thing you ever put in your mouth, but it's pretty good. As well, far as it's working, it's pretty maybe good. Maybe it tastes like, does it taste like fish? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's worse. <laughs> How about I went to the store and got some milk that's like, um, it's a, oh, what's the name of it? It's like a lactose-free milk, right? And, and I get it, and I'm like, um, and you know, normally you're expecting, well, maybe it might taste a little off, whatever. And so I taste it, and I'm like, it tastes fishy. Oh, that's strange. And right, so then I look on the ingredients, and it has freaking fish oil in it. So I took it back to the store. I was like, this milk is like, it tastes like freaking milk and fish. Are you kidding me? He's like, oh, it's a big seller. And I'm like, well, maybe it was called silk or something. Now that's, I don't I know. I think silk is actually soy milk. Yeah, it was some strange thing, but they put fish oil in it. Mm. Okay, so I want to I wanted to get a notepad because sometimes I can't remember what I'm talking about. Um, I want to ask you two things. First, like, now if you have two tigers together, in a cage or I don't like do you call them cages where you're at uh, cages enclosures catatats I like enclosures because they, they it's not so, it's so not a cage <laughs> so enclosure okay so if you have two tigers in an enclosure and they decide to fight what do you do we separate them but we don't put tigers together unless they were raised together their whole lives. Mm -hmm. um, I know an awful lot of places do put adult cats together and they just let the cats fight it out, which I think is cruel. Right now, These animals are solitary and they don't want to share space. But even cats who live together, like just yesterday, I saw three of our tigers that were siblings. They've lived together since they were born, which was like 1996, I think. And one of them had clawed up the back of the other one, playing around and goofing around. And so, you know, we're going to have to treat that cat. So what we do is we have these doors that we can shut. And right. we call one cat into one of the cages and shut the door and can separate them that way. Now, if, but now say you had two and they were fighting, do you have to wait, to, you have to wait till the fight's over though, right? I mean, you just can't like, can you go and break up the fight? There's not much you can do to break up the fight. I know a lot of times people say you should use a um, fire extinguisher because that noise and the smoke and stuff really scares them. We've never had a fight that bad that we've had to use that or a whistle or, you know, those cans that they make for people when they're out uh, walking maybe right. in a bad area of town. You might carry it and it's like a siren in yeah. a can. Uh, that yeah. sort of thing could break up a, well... <laughs> That sort of thing could be used to try and break up a big cat fight. But once they're focused on doing something, which is like doing harm to another cat, right. there's not much you can do to break it up. Uh, it just seems like if you were to use a fire extinguisher, that that would be like pretty harmful to the cat because of the chemicals in it. I don't know that you would spray it on the cat so much as just in the vicinity to distract them. The whole thing is uh, to get their focus on right. something else. Well, have you ever had anything like that happen? Not with big cats. 
we've had smaller cats get into fights and I tell people all the time every scar on my body is from breaking up bobcat fights oh really the cat lady. from cats who live together their whole lives and then decide one day I hate you and they just go at it and so the only way to break them up is to go in and physically pull them apart and in the meanwhile I get all torn to shreds doing it I haven't had to do that in a long time though because our cats are getting so old and oh. now most of them are separate yeah but plus you know it's not really like they have a lot of room in their enclosures, so I, I think what makes them fight is, uh, you know, or can make them fight, maybe, I don't know, being close together all the time, <laughs> you know. Oh, sure. Now, back to Hamburger Mary's, uh, you were just there, so, that, so apparently you're going to be there two times. Uh, and the well, first, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yesterday, we just went to see how that works oh, when they okay. do it for a charity, and then July will be actually, the charity will benefit us. Okay, well tell us how that works. How does a charity work there? What they do is there's no cover charge, and there's never a cover charge, I don't think, at Hamburger Mary's, but they ask the people that are coming for the charities, and it's always on a Monday night, to RSVP because they only have 200 seats, and they kind of need to know whether or not they're going to be like really crushed in there and how many staff they need to have. And then when your guests come, when our people, when we call out to our people and say, hey, come out to Hamburger Mary's, um, they will come, they can eat dinner there, you know, whatever drinks they want to buy, whatever food they want to buy, that's what Hamburger Mary's gets. And then they sell these bingo cards where you have three games on each card, and you get ten of those for ten dollars. So it's a dollar per game, and that's the only charge for the, the fundraiser. So people buy those games, and all of the money made from those games goes back to the charity. So if we sell, if we have 200 people that just buy one set of cards each, that's $2,000 right there. Plus we could offer full where people buy raffle tickets, and then they get half of the money if they win, and the charity gets the other half. So that's why we feel like we could probably get about 2500 out of it. Wow. Do you hear that sound that comes out of that crinkling sound? I think your mic is scraping on your shirt, like right here, or it's your beautiful hair. I wonder if it's my earrings. Yeah, because because I remember hearing it on the last show. And I was like, <coughs> oh, poor thing. Oh my goodness, my little Carol. <laughs> I don't like when people are sick, especially my friends. <laughs> I love the camera, don't I? I'm a camera camera kind of person. Okay, do, oh, uh, okay. Is that better? Oh, yeah, Please move around it. a little bit. Yeah, see, I still hear it. Wait, can you go to full screen just so I can see her for a second, a closer? <laughs> what is it that I'm doing wrong? Well, where's, can you point out where your microphone's at? Right there. Oh, no, that's your, that's your earphone. Where's your microphone? Is it, like... I think it's this piece right here. Okay, yeah, so it's coming from whatever that's touching. If I hold it out like that. Yeah, yeah, there, that's much better. So you probably put your hair it. normal. I think it was, I don't know what it was hitting. Maybe your necklace? No, well, I don't know. Yeah, she said when you touched the necklace, she heard it again. Gonna so is it just the noise of the necklace? You're going to have to get rid of the pearls, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyways, so did you like the way Hamburger Mary's does it? Are you, are you happy with that? I was very pleased. The um, person who hosts it is a drag queen. Her name is Melanie. Mm -hmm. And she was so much fun and really engaged the audience and clowned around with them. When uh, you would win one of the games, then she'd make you this come up front fun. and everybody would wad up all of their game cards and throw them at the person who won. So you'd get out uh, your frustration about the fact that you didn't win. Yeah. But, uh, now, did you get to talk to her? I did. She was really nice, and she gave us some great ideas for ways that we can turn this into a successful fundraiser. And we asked her about doing the costume contest, and she said, well, I think my people would really love to wear the cat ears and the cattails and stuff, so after the show, I'm going to see if I can find like a, a discount on a dozen cat ears and cattails for her, her uh, servers to wear. I hope you told her about your affiliation with our sister channel. You know, I don't know if they talked about that or not. How no, of course you did, because you're so modest. What's that? What did you say I you said did? Howie and Susan, our PR person, have been talking to her. I just got to talk to her that night a little bit. Oh. Well, be sure to drop the name, girl. I will. Because, <laughs> I mean, you are, you know, 
Because we're pretty big over here. <coughs> yeah, that's definitely your kind of place. What's that? Video? Oh, yeah. Um, well, are we ready to go? Would you like to go to your video clip? That would be great. All right, folks. Here's the video. <laughs> we love you. Big Cat Rescue here July the 1st. We love them. Ladies and gentlemen, oh... 61, oh, 61. Yes, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, G50. Moving right along, G50. I'm not hearing anything. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you won't hear anything. Does everybody get loose around? Does everybody have Girl, a good time? Get all our sniffing out of the way. Prosecutor, in other words, you know. <laughs> He's got you all on tape. And look, boys and girls, you better, Mama, you better tip well this evening because you know what? We got your tag number. Well, no, wasn't that fun? Just like I remember the place. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think it was wilder the night that you were there. It was pretty wild that night. Yeah. But I knew, uh, who was there that I knew? Must have been you. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if, if it was, and we, I didn't know it, like, because I'm like you all modest, and I'm thinking, oh, it couldn't be because of me. Well, I'm sure it wasn't. <laughs> I think Jennifer was the one that you said you knew. What was her name? Jennifer. Jennifer. Jennifer Warren. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we know her. And then I actually thought she was a real female. And then I, because that's what I've been hearing. So I think she, she had to change or something. And then I came back to Pittsburgh and told people I saw Jennifer up there. And, there, and I'm like, I go, cause I go, it's cool how she's a real woman. But yes, yeah, she performs with drag queens. They're like, she's not a real woman. Or she was in her, maybe she isn't, you know what I mean? She started out as a man. <laughs> well, that would make sense. Right. Well, um, I'm not... I, I think you'll do, I think you'll have a great time there when you do your, your <coughs> yours on July 1st. I bet you'll raise a ton of money because it's for animals. I hope so. And our supporters are just so wonderful. I, I really look forward to being in a whole room full of them having fun. That'll be fun. At that same channel where we are running that video, um, that's our secondary YouTube channel. Our first one is BigCatTV.com, and that's where Chris does all of his magic with his videos. But we have a secondary site at YouTube.com forward slash Daily Big Cat. And just since our last show, there's a few new shows that I've posted up there. One was Rambo the Jungle Cat mm -hmm. recently had to go to the vet, and so we show you, you know, what that's like, catching him, taking him to the vet, 
showing you the x-rays and the sonograms and um, the vet working on the cat. And then when he comes back to the sanctuary, taking him into our cat hospital and getting him, you know, ready to go back out into his enclosure. And then uh, there's a video I haven't had time to post yet. I'll do it later today of him going back out into his enclosure because he's doing much better now. And then there's also a video about our animal observation class. And that's something where our volunteers have to take a class about animal observation. So they have to be able to look at a cat and know if something is going on. A lot of times the only indication that we get that an animal is sick is the volunteer will say, there's just something not right about that cat. Something seems weird. Right. And so telling them things to watch for is cat drinking a lot, that sort of thing. So that whole video is about how to do that. Hmm. <coughs> and then, um, I think there's another video. Oh, the Vox tour system is the other video that we put up there. We talked on the last show about how we're using this headset and receivers for the tours. Mm -hmm. And one of our yes. uh, gift shop manager did a little video about that. And so she posted that online. So if anybody uses those or is thinking about using those, it's a great way for them to have a training tool available to them right away. Um, I received in the mail the little earphone you sent me. The mono earphone. Oh, good. <laughs> that was, that's, those are very cute. I like to inquire. I like to get some of those. But I, I li they're great for um, listening to a news show and also listening to the world around you at the same time. <laughs> they're perfect for the tours because that way they can hear if a golf cart is pulling up behind them and yet they can still be listening to the tour. Right. You know, uh, speaking of enclosures, how is that big, giant enclosure going, you know, where they can roam free? We've got the north wall done and the west or excuse me the east wall is about a third of the way done and i'm really hoping our big cat times is our printed newsletter and it goes out to i think somewhere between 60 and 80 thousand people and i'm hoping that the appeal in there will reach out to some people's hearts because i really want to get that cage done and the reason i want to get it done is we have two very old tigers here who have never, they came from the circus, and they've never been in an enclosure where they could just look up and see the stars at night and not see a cage roof over their head. They've never been in a cage where they could walk until they couldn't walk any longer and, you know, be so tired they couldn't even reach one side of the cage to the other. And this cage would be that for them, oh, but wow, it's got to get great. done before they die of old age. And every time I look at them, I'm just like, oh, God, I hope you can hang on for another couple of weeks until we get the funding for this. Right. So what's the whole what's holding it back right now is the funding. Uh -huh. So um, so if you said yes, right? Yes. Um, so say you had all the funding. How quick can it be done? Maybe three weeks. And how much more do you need? 123,000. 123,000. How much is it's it all? It's a lot together? of money. The whole project is like 200 and some odd, I think. 250. I think we've raised 60,000 of it so far. Wow. Now, if somebody would like to donate right now, what can they do? They can go to bigcatrescue.org forward slash donate and. Um, They'll find a lot of ways they can do it. They can do it by PayPal. They can do it on the page that actually talks about the cage. They can send us a check. There's lots of ways they can help. Hmm. <coughs> there's, there's, like that's certainly, I, I implore you all watching to please, uh, that's, I would love for that to happen. And I'd like to see that myself, that, it would, that these cats have the chance to, like, like you said, roam until they get tired. You know, like Sarmoti, right. he'd never be able to walk across that cage in one time. It'd take him probably three attempts to get all the way across that cage because he's so old. And Flavio is the world's oldest tiger. And, you know, for him not to get that opportunity before he dies just seems like such a shame. We're so close. He's right across the street watching it being built every day and just waiting for the funds to come in to finish it. So I want to ask you some stuff about Flavio, but before I do that, I would like to welcome everybody here to Wild Animal Television. Um, WildAnimalTelevision.com is where you can see the show currently. And uh, if you would like to sponsor this show, it's really easy. You just uh, you can contact me. Here's how you contact me the easiest. Uh, 
because I don't think I have an email with wildanimaltelevision.com because of how we did the URL thing mm -hmm. anymore. So currently, just call me <laughs> at um, 412-867-8900. And we'll get that on the screen for you. And so you call me at that time. Tomorrow I'll have an official email address for you. I have other email addresses, but it'll confuse you. So just call me at that phone number, or you can go ahead and call Carol. She'll get you in touch with me. And we will put your logo in one of these beautiful Hollywood squares behind me. You know, if you're, if you're I don't know, something, some sort of pet food, um, you know, anything. If you sell cat litter. <laughs> You know, if you're uh, a sanctuary as well, uh, you know, and a, a good sanctuary, non-breeding, um, you know, all these kinds of Thank things. You, What's that? What did you say, Carol? Carol. I said we all need cat litter. <laughs> yeah, we all need cat litter. Does people, do you need, do you use cat litter? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, so there you go. And that can help, that'll help keep the show running because, you know, this stuff is expensive. It is. And, you know, we bring you some cool information, a cool thing if you're on the East, East Coast. Something cool to watch during lunch, you know, or not. You can also, you know, it's just a cool thing to do. So go ahead and sponsor us right there. Now, back to Flavio. Is that what you said his name is? Flavio, yeah. Flavio. Um, it's so funny because we have a star on our other station called Davio Flavio, and it just makes me think of his name. <laughs> uh, so Flavio, how, how old is old? He's 24. And how do you know he's the oldest one? Because the oldest one uh, recently was in a newspaper article as having died, and the same newspaper article that came out in Animal People talked about Flavio being the second oldest tiger, but when that cat died, it made... Flavio, the oldest tiger. So the research that was done by Merrick Clifton is the first time that I realized that he was the oldest tiger in the world. I, I knew he was old. I knew he was older than dirt. But I didn't know he was the oldest tiger in the world. So how did you come to know Flavio? He came here from the circus. We brought in 20 tigers from the circus when they retired. And he was one of the cats that came in, I'm thinking in 2000 or 2002. Now, that's an interesting sentence there, because you said that when they retire, if you were not there to take these big cats when they retire, what would have happened to them? It's hard to say, because there's just no safety net out there for big cats, like no and currently tigers are the ones that suffer the most, because people will pay to pet them, and people will pay to go see cute little tiger cubs, and people will pay to go to the circus. Uh -huh. And as long as they do that, people continue to breed tigers, which can only be used for the first few years of their lives, usually. And they live, how long does a tiger live? <coughs> in most zoos and other facilities, they live to be 10 or 12. Here, they usually lived into their late teens and early 20s. Okay, so, so they're useful on the market for two years, right? If that. Okay. Yeah, most of their profit is made between the ages of 8 and 12 weeks when they okay. can actually be handled for photo ops. So let's just say it's a fantastic whatever, and they get two years out of it. So that means that there's a whole 10 years that they have to figure out something to do with it. So, or, or that's, where, that, that's where these canned hunts come into play. So like, we'll take that, we'll take that tiger off your hand. Oh, we'll take care of it. We'll take it live, please. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, that's so sad. And then they go and they have this field. I assume this is how this works. They have this field, they have this area that's enclosed in or, you know, within a, it's, it's like a, it's a setup hunt. You know, so they, so they let's just say they, they probably use an enclosed area. It's probably, a, I don't know, a few acres big. They enclose it. And then they go, okay, you paid your fee, go out and hunt some tigers. You get, this, you get to keep whatever you shoot. Good luck. $5, they often please. refer to themselves as being guaranteed kills. And I've even seen it where they've killed them in the cages. 
um, they're sitting there in like a truck body where the person is just walking up and shooting them. And it's not legal to do that with tigers, but what you'll, it is legal to do it with cougars and lions and mountain lions because they're not protected species. But um, what often can hunts where they're offering mostly hoofstock, but they'll have the cats. And sometimes they even have tigers there that have tags in their ears. Well, what do you think they're going to do with those cats? Of course, they're just going to say, oh, that's my pet. But you know if they've got them there, that, and that's what they do for a living, that that's what's going to happen to those animals. And yet there's just nobody running interference for those animals. But our video, going on and our bill was recently introduced. It's H.R. 1998, and that bill will end public contact, so there won't be any reason for people to be breeding tiger cubs for people to have the picture made with because you can't touch them anymore. Mm -hmm. And it will also ban the private possession of these animals. And that's the only thing that's going to work. We can't, there's not enough money for the government to regulate this kind of trade or to monitor it. Right. Um, we just need to end it. Where are these canned hunts happening at? Florida and Texas are famous for them. Florida. Um, Florida says that you're not allowed to kill carnivores in cages. But like I said, every one of those places that you go to, everyone that I've ever been to has had cats there. And when you ask them what they're going to do with those cats, they will just tell you, oh, those are my pets. Because that's, it's legal for them to have them. That's probably crazy frustrating for you since uh, you live in Florida. Yes. And you're like, that, and Florida's not that big. So that shit's <laughs> happening right down the street from you, in a way. Not down the street from you, but, you know what Practically I mean? Practically in my backyard. Yeah, and you could drive there in a day, or afternoon, probably. That's crazy stuff. I, I mean, that would... <sighs> and the loophole that makes that possible is that it's legal for people to have them. And if that loophole were taken away, and they just can't have them, then they can't abuse them, and they can't kill them. And so that's why, you know, we thought early on, we thought that maybe we just needed better laws and people needed to be trained better. And we tried that. We tried educating people about how to build right cages and how to take care of their animals and feed them and keep their people safe. But that didn't fix the problem because there are people out there that as long as they're allowed to do bad things to animals, they will. And so the only way to regulate that is to put an end to it with a ban. My word. But on some happy news, um, I had talked to you last week about little Buttons going back. She was yes. a little kitten that we were fostering, and she finally got a permanent home. Oh, good. So we're very happy about that. Excellent. And we had a casino night that benefited the sanctuary. Charles Rettenberg Realty does a casino night each year to benefit us, and they had theirs this past weekend. So that was really wonderful. That's another video that will be going up later on today on uh, Daily Big Cat. There's also been some action on a California bill that would ban the trapping of bobcats in uh, California near the refuges. You would think that, you know, the bobcats don't know the difference between when they're on the refuge and when they're off the refuge. And so what trappers do is they go set the traps up all around the refuge to catch the cats as they leave the area. So this bill would put an end to that, and it's already passed the first committee and headed to its next committee. So we'll be promoting that very shortly. It's um, a simply bill 1213 in California. If you're a California resident, you'll be able to have your say on that to your representative. Wow. I love my Nancy more than anything. <coughs> because she knows if I, she waits for me to, I love her. I don't even tell you why. <coughs> She's a good employee. <laughs> um, now, what's happening over there? Okay, I see all these website names coming up here on the screen. So can you tell us what those are? Um, uh, Carol? I keep wanting to say Nancy. <laughs> so Carol, I, are those links some that she sent, sent us? Yep. Okay. Catlaw.com, All right, so we'll go, to, we'll go to each one. So there, now Big Cat Rescue there, everybody, that you see on your screen, that is the official website uh, Big Cat Rescue uh, Sanctuary that's in Tampa, Florida. And uh, now Wild Animal Television right there is what you're watching us right now on. Or you might be watching us on a, another channel. Which I would like to welcome Justin TV viewers, Mondo Club viewers, and, and Roku viewers. <laughs> and uh, catch us on Roku. 
Next. <laughs> oh, okay, I think it's a thing that runs. Um, okay, now we have facebook.com forward slash Big Cat Rescue. That's where you can find Big Cat Rescue on Facebook. They are Facebook posters. Not posters, but they post stuff. You know, they're like one of those people that you want to be Facebook friends with because you can, uh, you know. They're Catch Us on Justin TV because we love them. Kitten now, kittencam.com, if you went there right now, you can watch kittens, right, Carol? We have three webcams. Um, one of the improvements that we're making around the sanctuary this past week is taking our internet speeds from 50 over 20, which is like 50 download to 20 upload, mm -hmm. to uh, 75 over 35. And some of them we're taking actually to 300 over 65. Oh. So we're hoping that will give you a much better experience on the webcams. And we're also building out a kitten cabana area. Right. Because currently the kittens are all in intern housing, and so it's hard for them to keep the webcams on everywhere. So you have right. to, you know, kind of scroll through those webcams to see which one's on, which one's not. Right. And you know, this is where I want to talk to you if you have any input on this, maybe after the show. But I'm finding that that webcam that you mentioned, the C90, plugged mm -hmm. into a laptop, fed through UStream, does great. It won't cut off. But I try using iPads and using their camera to, to film through Ustream, and they always cut off after about four hours, so I don't know why that is. Did you say the, the cam on the iPad? Yeah, I, I tried oh. just hooking up the iPad because they're Wi-Fi. Right. I would say and that that's probably just an energy thing, on the, like an energy, <coughs> uh, I, like a power save feature. I, I bet you a power save feature is kicking in on your iPad because there's no activity no physical activity going on for four hours, so it just shuts it off. Could be, because if all the kittens moved to some other part of the cage, there wouldn't be anything moving in front of the camera for a while. Right. Like, I, I do not have an iPad. I'm an Android pad user. I use a Nexus 7. But I would say a place to start would be look in your power settings. I'll do that. Because I'd really like for those webcams to be on all the time so that people can always see the kittens. Yeah, of course. Right. And we're preparing a big screened room area so they can get fresh air out in that area. It'll be called the Kitten Cabana, and we'll put the webcams out there as soon as that part is done. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait to take puppy pictures. Well, I took, I took pu 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 puppy pictures while they were being born. I, totally, I saw that on your Facebook page. Yeah, I totally went through the whole experience via Facebook. Like, every time she'd have a puppy, I would take a picture of it and post it, like, you know, through the whole thing. But uh, if, if you could switch to the one camera, the other camera there, because the camera that you're talking about, we also use here, not on the main one, but we use it as our studio cam. And that's, that's the C920 uh, that, that we're, we're talking about. But uh, what, the reason why I even point, I hear somebody else calling in. Yeah, take a call. Yeah, take a call. Hold on, caller. Hey, caller. Hello. 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 Welcome to Cat Chat. Hello. Oh, okay. We'll give you a second there. David. You're breaking up there a little. Okay. I there. Yes. I think this is, I recognize that voice. Yeah. Tim. Yes. That's hey. the, uh, that's the sexy guy from New York City. Well, I don't know if he's sexy or not. I've oh. never seen him. What about do adopt a puppy or a cat and everyone has to pay 50 bucks for your puppies oh. that money will go to that's, that's true but that's but if i i'm like if i can get if i can get 50 dollars a puppy i'll be uh happy that i uh that i even got anybody even wanting to take a puppy <laughs> it's going for so when things are going to cause, lots of times they go faster. So hey, you, I thought, we help with that. There's two birds, one stone. Because he, he's, he's using his iPad. I was going to say, Carol, this man here is the one who would know that iPad question. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, I'm wondering it's our if chairs it's like the lock setting or... Um or like David said, a power setting somewhere that I'm missing. Well, if you go into settings, 
on your iPad. There is a lock screen, and it is, I believe, five minutes, ten minutes, and never. So try to check never and see if it works. Yeah. Okay. If that, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work, there might be an override. But after four hours, the system will automatically shut itself down. It keeps telling me that it's recording and that the time for recording has been filled. And I don't want it to record. I just want it to broadcast. I'm only hitting the button that says broadcast, but it keeps recording instead. No, oh, that's what the problem is then. It's just, it's filled up. So the iPad's probably staying on. It's just your, your hard things, your hard thing, your hard drive, whatever's filling up. Yeah, you only get four hours. Wow. But I don't know how to bypass that. It doesn't have that. I don't have that same issue when I'm using that. Um, what I would do is different. I would use different... How are you broadcast? What software are you using? Ustream has an app that's made for the iPad. Right. So that's the problem. I wonder if, yeah, I would look in the settings of that somehow. You gotta be able to somehow shut that recording off. Yeah. Or I've checked every setting that's on there. I can't find anything. See, that's the thing about like iPad mm -hmm. apps or, or like apps in general or anything Windows 8. It's all this like app stuff, and then they cut out all of the like really cool little features that you need, you know, for little stuff like this. Speaking of apps, I'm building a tour app right now. You're building a tour <coughs> app. Apps are, are expensive to do and hard to make, just so you all know. Oh, oh but let me well, let me actually before we talk. How about many that, boxes do you, How many boxes do you have back there? Did you, a picture of a puppy in each box until they're all adopted out. That's a good idea. Well, there's there's eight puppies, so there's one for each. Um, so that's actually a good idea. But anyway, the reason why I, I was bringing up those cameras, the C920s, or or you get C910s, um, is because if you are a person that is you know, you want to like, you have a, a place where you're taking care of animals and you want to try to raise a few dollars. You can always get one of these cameras that you see, because that's the quality of them right there. They're really high quality for the dollar. I mean, they're actually HD and they're, they're affordable, but you can throw it up, you know, broadcast your animals, whatever like that. And that's a way to raise money and get started and, you know, put it on your website, stuff like that. In other words, that camera... But before I go, I just want to come Carol on all of her hard work. And I uh, just think that what she does is just spectacular. Well, thank Tell you so day. much. Thank you for calling in, too. Yes, thanks, Tim. See, I think Tim is a, he, he's concealing his identity because he's this huge star and he's not letting us know who he is. Because <laughs> I recognize his voice from somewhere. I'm telling you, he sounds like the guy who owns Interscope Records. Wow. <laughs> it could be him, I don't know. But meanwhile, it's probably just some old, just regular person. <laughs> okay, um, was there something else I want to talk? Did I miss something? Um, actually, we have a VIP coming today. Her name is Luana, and she's been working for us remotely. She's, I have two employees that don't live here. She lives in Missouri, and the other one lives in the Philippines. And um, she does our bigcatfund.com site. And that's oh, all yeah, of the games and puzzles and that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. And People know her best from her child ID kits because what she'll do is she'll co-brand them Big Cat Rescue and the Sheriff's Department or Big Cat Rescue and the school um, district that wants them. Right. And then they pass them out to all of their kids that come for different kinds of safety classes. And it's a kit that teaches children about you know staying away from strangers and not getting into cars and don't candy and that kind of stuff. But... At what it's also doing is taking a hair sample from the child and a DNA swab and having all of that stuff stored so that if your child is abducted, you have all of that information immediately in a kit to give to the police. Because if you waste any time at all, your kid could end up being killed. And so it, right. it's the fastest way to get that information to the authorities. And she's gotten this thing, even in Australia, I think she had somebody ask her to co-brand over there. So it's a great way that other organizations can get their message out to people that they wouldn't ordinarily reach by doing something for them. 
And what she does is she puts just hundreds of games and puzzles and things on there. So it's something fun that the kids want to keep and want to continue to use. So she's arriving today and she's going to be here for the next 10 days. And she'll have lots more photos to post on Facebook for you. Uh, Your microphone's scraping again. Did I drop it down again? Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. Because you sound so good when it's not scraping. Okay, and then finally, I just want to ask you one other thing. And uh, you have a newsletter called Big Cat Times, right? <gasps> that is going to be so cool, yes. Now, now going to be, or, or is it not already in, in progress? Well, the Big Cat Times is a print magazine, and it's already going out. It's at the printer right now, so yeah. it'll be coming out for the summer edition. Okay. But what's so cool about it is that we also host an online version And that online version is going to be kind of like what you see in the Harry Potter movies where you're reading through the newspaper and then a story comes to life. And that's what we're going to be able to do very shortly with our online version is you'll be flipping through the pages and looking at all the stories and you can play the video of the movie of the cats. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's so cool. And who, uh, do you, do you make this or is it like a company that's making it for you or how how do you achieve such a thing? It's a software that you buy. It's called 3dissue.com, and it's really expensive. It's like $2,500 for the software, but once you own it, you own it, so you can do as many publications as you want with it. And what I want to do is take, we have all of our back issues of the magazines going back to back in the 90s, so you just import your PDF, which would be your print magazine, and then you can copy, um, you know, kind of like highlight over areas that you want to come to life and put in the video files so that when people come to that, they flip to that page and that movie starts playing. So I'm planning on doing it with all of the old issues as well. All right. Okay. And then as last thing, and I know we had, there's more on your list, but we'll get to, to those next week. And uh, but actually, I don't think we even have time to go to the other thing. Um, well, uh, what was that last website? I didn't see. There's Big Cat. There's Big Cat Law. What's Cat, okay. cat Law? Cat Laws. Dot com? Yeah. What is it again? Cat Law. Dot com. Cat Laws. Dot com. Oh, okay. And that's where you will be able, probably later in the day, to be able to weigh in on that California bill with the Bobcats, and also where you can help support HR 1998 which would ban the private possession of these big cats. That one's already there. Um, In fact, if you just go to bigcatban.com, it'll take you directly to that link where you can send a letter to your congressperson. We have a sample letter, and we make it really easy for you. Also, anybody who isn't on our mailing list, (coughs) but who would like to be on it, if you go to our website at bigcatrescue.org, Over in the left-hand sidebar, there's a place where you can enter for our Animal Lovers Dream Vacation, which is a great vacation. You get to stay on the beach, and we pay your airfare, and we pay for um, you to come and do like our keeper tour and our feeding tour and all of our best tours. But anyway, if you enter that, it's free to enter. It'll also put you on our mailing list if you opt in. So that way you'll be able to see this really cool thing when it comes out with the animated Harry Potter type uh, um, newsletters. Right. Oh, wow. Well, it looks like we have come to the end of our show for yet another cat chat number five. Or, or, no, I think we're on number six. I don't know. I guess we should number them. Yeah, Thank well, you so we do. much for being tolerant of my voice and coughing. Oh, that's okay, though. We still love you. But I believe it's number six today. So I want to thank you all for joining us here. You know, you can catch us every. Wednesday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time here at wildanimaltelevision.com and you can watch our show live. And then it'll be back up in the broadcast in, um, very shortly. Now, don't forget, you can sponsor one of these squares behind me. And I like Tim's idea by putting the puppies in there. And it, That's a great idea. And if you donate $50, you can have a puppy. But you have to pass my standards. You can't be just a, you can't be a puppy mill. And you have to spay and neuter your puppy. Yes. Don't be dumbass Dave and think that you don't need to do that. Because apparently, life finds a way is, what, it's, is what, what I'm learning. You know, for the boy dogs, they have something called zootering, and it's just an injection. They get one injection and they're neutered. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that sounds My, great. What about the females? They need to do that too. I mean, they, you know. Yeah, that's going to be a little harder, I think. Why do females always get the short end of the stick? I tell you. I'm serious. I, sh I shouldn't be complaining because I'm a male, but I, I see it. I'm not blind. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for calling in, Carol. Or thanks for being, thanks for letting me be on your show. <laughs> Thank you for producing your show, David. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Wouldn't be here without you. Uh, he probably would be just some to somebody else doing it. <laughs> so, but uh, thanks. So. And then, um, and that's our. That means the end. The thing is then. So, go ahead and hang up, and I'll see you next week. Bye. 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 And uh, watch this. All right, please hold. And uh, that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. Cat Chat Show. My name is David Stanton. And I'll see you later. Goodbye.